How are you all doing today? Hello, hi. <laughs> For those of you who don't know or new to the channel, hello, I'm Leticia Gillett, and this stream is sponsored by Lenovo. And this is called the Archetype uh, series. And we, about a month, a month and a half, we're gonna start from scratch, from concept until render a, a new archetype a definition. So, yeah. So, um, last week we finished our archetype innocent. I'm gonna show you guys just a little bit of the final result. And today we're gonna start uh, the concept phase for the archetype rebel or outlaw. Uh, there's many different names. Um, yeah, so let's look at what we did in the past month or so for the Archetype Innocent. And if you guys want, I can open the Marmoset scene where it set up the lighting materials. And if you have any questions, I'm I'm glad to answer them. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Thank you for the streams. You inspire so much. You're welcome. It's my pleasure. I love that no one invited me to do this because it's just like a cool platform to, again, you know, like we just, um, hopefully for people that are new to the craft or, or even not, uh, to see that all the struggles <laughs> that I have to go through to get some, somewhere. And we all humans, we all go through them. So I hope that makes you all feel like Oh, she can do it. I can do it too. You know what I mean? Kind of the feeling. Hi, 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 Natalia. Hi. Awesome. All right. So, um, let me share my screen. For animation, is your job to do all the facial expressions? It depends on the studio. Uh, some studios, they want the modelers to create the blend shapes, the facial expressions. Some studios, it's, uh, the rigor is in charge of that. So it depends where are you working, yeah? Let me share my screen. You guys can see that. Uh, so the final result we did, I don't know if you all saw, but this was the final image. Make it big so you all can see. Yay. So that was uh, the final image for the innocent archetype. A lot of people have gave great ideas here in the chat and outside the chat on how to make this image fun and expressive. And I think we did it. I think it looks pretty fun. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the results and the storytelling. And, uh, you know, you guys probably know at this point, but I'm all about storytelling, you know. So I think we did. This is uh, the final result. I also did a video. Let me get here. Where's the video? Mm -mm -mm. Here we go. I also did this video, which has a, just a turntable of a, our little crack creature and, and a grandma. Yay. And basically, as you all saw, I did the uh, whole sculpting part in ZBrush. Everything actually was done in ZBrush. And then we, I took, I did a quick UV in ZBrush as well. And then I took it to Substance Painter and I did all the texturing bits on there. And then all the rendering was done in Marmoset Toolbag. Yay, thank you. You guys want to see the Marmoset scene before we start the next one? Or we should just jump right into the Rebel archetype? What do you guys feel? I'll give a, a moment so you can type on the chat if you like. Uh, yes, please. Marmoset? Okay. Let me open Marmoset. Fifu, hi Felipe. How's it going? All right, so the marmoset scene. Let me get it. 
here. What is it? Set. Show the scene, please. Okay. All right. So this is sort of a marmoset scene. Let me make marmoset a bit smaller here. How did you make the lighting so good? I don't know. It was marmoset, man. Marmoset is powerful. So this is the, the lighting, the raw image from marmoset. Uh, as you can see, it went pretty fast. And um, basically, let me just show you guys the lighting a little bit. Here we go. So, make this a bit smaller. And you can see here, this is without the retracing on, so it's easier to navigate and stuff. But as you can see, I made like a ground frame. And then um, I put the creatures in here. And you guys saw this stage, but I just made the environment sort of like putting stuff in the back to make it feel large and, and you know, give some depth to it. Am I having my problem? Can you guys hear me? Hello, hello. Is it better? I hope it's better. Um, so, as I was saying, I, I set up some stuff uh, thinking of the composition, right? So you can see this little grass here, and there, I put a little creature here in the foreground. Uh, yeah, let me put on drift. Is it? I I think now it's gonna get better because I turn off ray tracing, so it should get better. Um, let me know if it if it got any better, please. So here you can see I have my ground plane, and then I put some creatures in the back there, and then the mushrooms and. And all the plants here for the camera to see. Hi. Better. Thanks. Yay. Thank you. Thanks for letting me know. Um, yeah. So, like I said, all the texturing I did in Substance Painter. Um, and then uh, the lighting here basically is this. The lighting setup I have. Let me turn it on here. So I have one sunset um, HDRI. For those of you who don't know what HDRI is, it's, it's called high dynamic range. Um, it's an image that um, is saved as EXR or HDRI and the pixels emit light, they're beyond zero to one. So let's say this, this, er this white area here on the right, on the left, I mean, um, that white is beyond one of white. It is actually emitting light and, and, and save the lighting information on the image. So if I turn off here, let me uh, go here and light. And then if I turn off everything, I'm gonna make all black, okay? Oi, Marcos. Mm -hmm. I turn off everything. So you can see all the light is off. And then if I turn on just the sunset, which is this HDRI image. So I'm gonna turn on, boop, and you can see it gives like a, like ambient lighting feeling. And also it kind of like, depending on the colors of the image is gonna tint your image. So right now this image has some blues and oranges. So you can see that I have some blues and oranges on an image, you see? So I love having Azure Eye to set the ambience of the lighting. If I turn off that, I'm gonna turn on my sunlight. So my sunlight is um, the most intense light, let's say inside, take it here. So you can see without the Azure Eye, the sunlight is, is obviously I don't have ray tracing on, but it's this harsh light, right? That's going on. So, but this is my main light. So it's tinted a little bit yellow because it's a sunset. So you can see everything feels a bit more uh, yellow tinted. I did the main texture uh, poly paint I did in ZBrush, but the texturing work I did actually in Substance Painter Marcus. Um, so this was my uh, main light. 
I have also a backlight. You can see just to emphasize the, the skin shader in the character. So having a backlight is gonna make, if I turn on here, the, the full quality, you can see, let me wait to render so I don't get, my mic doesn't get cut. One second. All right, I think it should get better now. So you can see here that um, a backlight is gonna help to make their ears pop, right? The skin shader is gonna pop a bit more, as you can see. So that's why I added uh, SSS light. Uh, so if I put it all together now, I have my SSS light, like I said, it's a backlight. And then I have the sunset, which is an ambient light. And then I have my main light. And then that all combined made that final result of our scene, which is this one. See? So now that we know, let's take a look here. Let me get my Epic Pen. So now that we know, you can notice that there is a little rim here. Little rim. That's our backlight, right? There's a backlight coming here to kind of make things pop, um, including the, the mushrooms, you see. And then we have one big main light coming from here, which I, some people call a key, a key light. This one was a backlight. And then we have that dome light, we call the dome light, right? Because the Azure Eye is like a dome that goes around the scene. So I'm going to call that, uh, whoops, not a B, a dome. And just with those three lights, there's only three lights, we made the whole scene. Cool. Let me read the chat, the chat here. Mateus, hey, Mateus. Leticia, I have a doubt about using Substance Painter and Marmoset, for example. Can I insert the, to the model some materials and texture in Substance Painter and rendering and render using Marmoset? Or if I use Substance Painter, I have to render in Substance No, no. Substance Painter, you can just bake the texture there. So you can texture everything, bake the textures, and then bring to Marmoset. That's what I did. Okay. So, so you can use Substance just to paint the textures. And then you're gonna bake those textures and then you're gonna plug back in Marmoset. Cool. The results are just amazing. Yay, thank you. That is magic. Yes, it is magic, right? So as you can see here, having that backlight also give me a little highlights in some areas here. So it's always nice to put a backlight. I, I love backlights because it creates that kind of contour, right, on the character. So um, I advise using backlights for show. Sure. All right, that's about it. Do you guys have any more questions about the scene or should we move forward? Um, if I get a material here just to show, let's say for example, her skin, her skin stuff, you can see that all the maps I baked, if I open the map here, you can see the color map for her face and hand. All of this, I again, like a texture in Substance Painter, I baked it there and then I brought to my home set. Same thing with the creature. If I open the creature map here, you can see what's going on. And again, the poly paint, which would be like the color, I, I painted in ZBrush and then I just brought Substance Painter, the ZBrush painting I did. I did not start from scratch in Substance. All right, a little ask, what the idea for today's stream? Let's talk about that. All right, I'm going to close the scene. We can talk more about it later if you guys have get, come up with any questions. But the idea for today, okay, so remember, this show is called Archetypes. And we have 12 archetypes defined by Carl Jung. And here are the archetypes types. <laughs> archetype types. Um, so last stream you guys chose for us to do the rebel archetype which is the same as the outlaw okay and let's let's 
let's read a little bit about the rebel. So before we did the innocent, here's some descriptions for the rebel here. Here's some descriptions that we need to keep in mind. So the motto of the rebel is rules are made to be broken, right? The core desire in general is revenge or revolution. The goal is to overturn what is not working. The greatest fear to be powerless or ineffectual. Strategy, disrupt, destroy, or shock. The weakness for the rebel, crossing over to the dark side, crime. So a rebel, if he doesn't have the heart set good or something very hard happens to them, they tend to go to the dark side, even though not necessarily all rebels are going to the dark side, right? A talent outrageousness and radical freedom the outlaw is also known as the rebel revolutionary wild man the misfit iconoclast so um again like a rebel doesn't mean that it's someone always bad or anything like that it's just um for me what i was thinking is to use this world of revolution um to fix what is not working, right? To break the form, break the, the cookie cutter, you know? And here are some examples in movies and TV shows and cartoons of different kinds of rebels, right? Phoebe Buffet, as we know from Friends, she is not necessarily a bad person, but she's definitely a rebel, right? She never gives up. She can inspire the masses. You know, she breaks the mold. Um, Again, like a weakness, um, sometimes they have to earn things the hard way because they're they're so passionate and uh, sometimes, you know, people don't understand where they're coming from. So a motivation is the world sucks, let's change it, right? They want to uh, express themselves. They want to be unique. So they're very uh, inspiring to other types of archetypes, right? Same thing with Katniss Evergreen. Everdeen. A Robin Hood is a very good rebel, right? Zoro, etc. So I think you guys got the idea of what we're gonna do. Let me just see. Mateo said got it, but the materials and textures store inside the model file. The materials and textures are automatically exported. Um, it's it's inside substance, so you can export the textures from there, it's just like JPEG textures or whatever format you prefer. So if I open here some of my textures just so you can see. Um but but it being it's just files, texture files, see, and then I plug to the shader inside Marmoset. Cool. All right, so uh here's what we're thinking. So when I was uh, thinking this week about what we should do, the idea I came up with, <laughs> you guys are going to laugh because it's very me, but the idea I came up with was this. So I'm going to pitch you guys my story and you guys tell me what you think. <laughs> All right. So here's the story. Just imagine. Here's our panel. Okay. Imagine a stage. You know those like school uh, choir stage? So imagine a little stage and we're gonna have about, let's say one, two, three, four. And we're gonna have four kids. They're gonna be like about 10 years old, 10 years old. And they're gonna be like singing on a choir, choral, for those of you, speak Portuguese, a coral, coral de música, so a choir, and they're all dressed the same for this choir event, you know, there's going to be some cutouts back here of like a tree, cutouts like, a, you know, those choir cutouts like from a play, so there's like a bird here that's going to be hanging on from a, you know, a string, and then some bushes that's going to be like just, again, like just a put, put out. And then let me get the, let me just delete this here. So they're all going to be the same, singing the same, dressed the same. And then at the end here, we're going to have this little shit. It's going to be like this little rebel girl. 
And she's gonna be like singing her heart. Just imagine her like, hey, she's gonna be like her her clothes are gonna be all expressive. She painted herself, she put some jewels on it. She, her hair is like all messed up and something. And the idea is that she she came on the day of the event and she, in the morning she decided to that she wants to express herself. She wants to have fun. And she changed her whole clothes and her hair. And she appeared at the moment. And the teacher is like, oh, my God. All right, all right. Just go, 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 go. So she's like completely different than everyone else. So, again, uh, to tell a story, tell a story, the best way to create contrast, right? So how am I creating contrast? There's this row of kids that look just the same, they're singing the same way, they have the same facial expression. And then we're going to have this rebel girl that is just like, she changed her clothes, she's not holding the little book, she's just singing her heart, her heart out, like with a lot of love. Again, she's not like a bad rebel in any way. She's just like so passionate about it that she wants to give her best. She wants it to, to bring it all that she has. All right, that's my pitch. What do you guys think? That's what I thought for our next uh, four weeks, I guess. We're going to be doing this four to five weeks. All right. Nadezima, I am. She said, hey, Lynn, that's such a fun idea. When I was a kid, we had a Christmas theater. And everyone was dressed as angels and we were holding candles. Story, a kid started running because her wings were on fire. That's pretty good. <laughs> I hope she's fine, though. Uh, all right, awesome idea. Can't wait to see the process. Yay. Can you make her like Encanto style, please? Going ambitious again. Yeah, you know, you only live once. You got to be ambitious. <laughs> I was going to go a bit more tamed, but I'm a rebel too, you know what I mean? So let's break the mold. Let's be ambitious again. All right. So uh, we could we could look at some Encanto images, Khalil. I was thinking a different approach though. Like since I'm being very ambitious and rebel here, uh, about what we're going to do, uh, I thought maybe going a bit more stylized so we can uh, simplify a bit the shapes. So now we're going to uh, search together here some reference images. And what I was thinking was something like um, something like Luca from Pixar. Um, a bit more, you know, like tubular arms, uh, being, being mouths. So let's get some reference here. I'm going to copy this. And again, I'm going to make a little area here for us on, on PRF. Let's put this here. So I'm going to get some images with full body and some that has a more close up on the face. Copy, copy image, paste. Okay. Here in PRF, if you hold C, you can crop an image as well. If you want to organize better your stuff, you can do it like this. Uh, again, like I'm just looking for stuff that has close ups in the face, close ups in the body. Uh, I'm not going to do straight look up. I'm just putting here as a reference. Another one we can look is turning red, which is similar, um, similar vibe. It's a bit more anatomical turn, turning red, but um, still gonna help us kind of work. Okay, put it here. See what else I can find. I think that's enough. It is good because it's like kind of like a more generic background character, so we can take a look and see some some cues. 
which command do you use to crop image in pure ref? You hold C. So I'm holding C, I click and drag, and then it kind of selects, uh, you have to select the image and then you hold C, click and drag, and then it crops it. Pretty cool. Let's see what else it can do. I'm gonna get here just different faces so we can get inspired by it. Okay. There's some some of the four town boys. Put it here. Yeah, no worries. Um, now, okay, so we have Luca, we have Pure uh, turning red. I'm going to look at the bad, bad guys from DreamWorks. Um, it's tricky because they're mostly creatures, but there's some humans. I want to look at the heat. So let me put humans. Here we go. Look at how cute the little humans. So damn cute. Modeled by Joshua. Joshua, it's a great uh, modeler at DreamWorks. Shout out to him. Let me see if I can find. There's like a little boy here as well. We can see. Oop. Let me open. So that is pretty cool too. It's very simplified, as you guys can see. Uh, the anatomy is a bit still a lot of anatomy compared to what I see in my brain. Uh, one thing I didn't do with you all that it's very important to do, and I did in my mind, but ideally we should do it together in paper, is basically list. Okay, so when I had the idea of doing this choir thing, right, well, how did I come to this idea? First thing, I knew that my theme was rebel, right? So I knew that. So I start thinking like, okay, I want to show a kid being rebel. So I put the word kid. Then I thought something like, um, uh, thought about like theater or choir or something where, uh, you know, like church choir where everyone dresses the same, they're all the same. But then this kid was like completely different and she was expressing herself, right? Another thing I thought was, um, uh, you know, pushed, the stylization was pushed more. So that's why I'm looking more like tube arms with like cutesy, like chubby little hands, you know, sort of thing. Um, another thing I thought was that it was a good, a good type of rebel, right? It was not, we could have the dark side of the rebel or the good side of the rebel. I decided to go with the good. So normally this is what I do. I start putting words together so I can start constraining myself, right? If you don't put words, there's a million possibilities. But then if I start defining things, I start constraining myself to uh, get closer to an idea. So it doesn't feel overwhelming, basically. You know what I mean? So I recommend doing this. Every time you're going to start the concept of your own, put a few words together. You know, if you can choose an archetype for the story you want to tell and then go for it. Finn said, I just joined and the scene of the old lady and the little critters you showed in the beginning is super cute. Looking forward to this project. Yay. Thanks, Finn. It's awesome. That was so fun to do and nerve-wracking. I don't know if I mentioned to you guys, but it's very nerve-wracking to concept live in front of people. So it's definitely taking me out of my comfort zone, which is not a bad thing. Sometimes you need that push to, you know, test your limits. So I'm seeing this as a good challenge, not a bad challenge. All right, I'm going to get this one. Again, if you hold C. Like a drag. This another idea we can use is some, uh, for example, Totoro. The kids from Totoro, you know, they they have like some level of stylization that we can think of. So I'm not gonna get Totoro itself. I'm just gonna get kids. Um,
if someone did the archetype with your stream, can we see the work with hashtag? Maybe it would be fun to see all those ideas. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know um, if anyone has been working with me. I mean, I invite everyone to work at the same time. That would be awesome. I don't know if anyone did it. <laughs> but it would be great to see it. You guys could definitely use some, some hashtag or something. Oh, this is a good one. Check it out. Um, another show that is very kind of stylized that I love to use an example is, I don't know if you guys ever watch Revolting Rhymes. I love um, kind of like, you can see the kids here, more 2D feeling, more simplified. So we can use that as a reference as well. Let me find more kids here. I want to find more full body. This one is nice. So you can see what I'm thinking is like more simpler limbs, not a lot of anatomy, simplified faces. So we can finish the project. Um, here's another one just for the body. So you can see it's pretty cool. Do you guys have any other suggestions of stylized stuff we can look? with that kind of sort of vibe. This one's cool. We can look at how they made the face. You don't do 2D concept before? I do not. I go straight to concept in 3D. That's just how my brain works. But I encourage if you like to do in 2D first, you should definitely do it. But it's just not how. I do it. Maybe Coraline without the creepy factor. Yeah, Coraline's a good one. Coraline. Coraline. Um, what's the name of the studio again? Um, like a check it out. Yeah, Coraline is a good one. Let me pick an image. Actually, everything like a. It's a good. Good one for us. Okay, I'm gonna put Coraline here. Cool. Now uh, I'm gonna stop looking for three D images, and then I'm gonna start real world images. So if I type choir, uh, kids choir or something, just so we can see like the idea of how they dress, maybe. So we can see here, this is an example of what I'm thinking is that everyone has a certain uh, uniform, but then she she changed her uniform. So it's a bit different than everyone else's. But you can see here some, some ideas of like kids behaving and singing together, but then she's going to be like doing her own thing. Uh, here, it's another uniform style. Make this smaller. It's a good one as well. Let's see. This is good. What's going on? Cancel, cancel. I think that's enough. You guys got the idea, but like, you know, just think about some sort of uniform that she can modify to make it super expressive, you know? So we might go something very monotone for the other kids, and then she just painted hers and put some jewels or something in it. And come on, PRF. Save it. Anyways, let's start. What do you guys think? So I'm going to start blocking like a basic kid's body. And then uh, we can think about the small nuances we can do to make at least, I was thinking at least four kids. And then our kid's going to be the fifth, like being all expressive and stuff. 
So it's a small choir, not a big one. And uh, so let's start blocking out some body proportions, just so we can feel if we're going the right path. Cool? All right. So as you all know, I normally start with changing the sphere to this kind of very low rise sphere so we can start blocking the body. I like to use a camera of like 85 to start is a flat camera. I'm going to duplicate the sphere and put up here just as a safe, safe sphere to start from. And let's, let's jump right in. So first thing, I'm going to block a little bit the size of the head. So I'm going to duplicate so I can create the jaw. So looking here. It's going to block a little bit what the head is going to be. So head proportions, right? So thinking here. Very simple shapes right now. They're kids, so we can give a little more like less jaw and a bit more uh, cranium volume. Here we go. For now. And then uh, let's put some ears on this skin. So I like to block things very fast because after I block, that's when I'm going to play with proportions. So I'm just putting like some shapes for now. And then after that, we're going to test some proportions on my kids to see how it feels, what we can push to create contrast, all that good stuff that you guys know about. So, I'm going to mirror this ear. All right. Push it down a bit. And just for now, like I said, I'm going to put a shape for the nose. But depending on the stylization that we're going to do, we might want to, you know, rid of it, the nose shape, or whatever. I'm just going to do something like this. And uh, some people sometimes ask me, like, do you uh, use base mesh to model? I do not use base mesh to model. I like to do things fresh from scratch. That keeps me in check. That keeps me studying and making sure I'm always aware of my shapes and my anatomy. Uh, when I use base mesh, uh, sometimes you can, you can lose a little bit of that um, sensibility to like, adjusting shapes and anatomy from scratch. So that's why I, I prefer me to do it. I like to do everything from scratch. Cool. So let's make a little neck volume here. And again, I'm just blocking shapes. I'm not thinking too much about design yet. I am thinking though about that noodle feeling, you know, where there's not a lot of anatomy going on. But beyond that, I'm not like thinking too much beyond that. So this is going to be the uh, rib cage. If you have any questions of, uh, uh, even though we're not doing much anatomy, but there's still some nuances that we need to think about, right? So if you have any questions about that, let me know. What are the nuances I'm talking about? For example, this, right? You never make the, the rib cage straight on the character. You always want to have a little angle going on. So those are the small nuances that I'm thinking of when I'm doing um, the block out. So this is going to be the volume for the rib cage. And then we're going to get one for um, the pelvic area. So this is going to be the pelvic uh, volume. Here's the booty area, right? Here's a bit more flat in the front. Here we can give some volume because uh, of the gluteus maximism tool. So we can think about this, we can think this angle, right? And then we have this pointing up like this, this angle. And then this, we can point down 
the pelvic bone normally points down and then the rib cage points up a little bit like this so it creates this sort of like uh, different ver uh, vector shape right so if i go back here i can angle this down a bit more like i said the front is a bit flatter overall the bone and then here we can add some volume and then again here i can i can point this up and then this all right again i'm thinking of kick proportion so that's why he's a bit big head well uh, you guys feel free to send any questions in the chat if uh, about what i'm doing i'm just going for it right now so we can have a a, a quick block out so for the legs again like i use spheres for everything as you can see because they're going to be more noodle character um you know i'm just like making the spheres here like thin in this case so it's more noodly um this is for the leg this and then i'm going to duplicate this one to make the bottom part and one thing i like to do is to create this s so check it out i'm pushing this back right pushing this back i'm pushing this forward a little bit i'm forcing just to explain but you see this s going on here another important thing is that we have a arc here straight straight arc see this is very common in the leg if you think about it in a very simplified way okay so when you're doing legs in general you want like an arc in the front a straight in the bottom straight in the back arc in the bottom like this doing this s shape cool his legs might be uh, a bit too short and i need uh, in general when you're doing a character right from here to here is the same amount from here to here in general right uh, so i could make the legs longer and put the foot here doesn't mean that i cannot break but in human proportion proportions in general is that again doesn't mean i cannot break like if we go analyze some stuff here let's take a look at this little girl for example so we have here and here so this is x and then only this right so it's a very different amount but it works as well so again it's not a rule i'm just doing following the following rules right now because it's easier to block thinking about those rules. And then later I break those rules and start creating contrast. So I'm not, again, I'm not gonna do too much anatomy change. So I'm gonna just make sure I'm not pushing too much. Okay. When you work from a fresh, a fleshed out to the concept, would you start roughing like this as well? Yes. But when you have a concept, it's easier to follow the proportions of the concept already. So you don't need to kind of like go, you can go a bit more following the concept instead of um, doing what I'm doing, which is basically I'm blocking out first and then I'm going to concept, right? So I'm going to merge down the slags together so they can, and then I'm going to mirror this. I might make them, like I said, a little longer. Oops, a little longer like this for now. Cool. Uh, let's give very quick foot for it. For the foot, the easy way is just crop. If you hold control and you click on a scale, it's going to crop the geo, you see? So what I like to do, I just crop like this to make a little dome. And then I make a little funny shape like this, just for now. They're probably gonna be wearing shoes, so um, we can use this as a start shape. But for now, I'm just not concerned about that too much. I can flip it out just to give a little that's too much. Your L mirror. Now we have some foot here. 
Cool. And now let me save it so it's good. No man, we're gonna do zero two rebel inside here. I'm gonna make a folder called Zeta Brush and I'm gonna put rebel zero one. Oops. Okay. Now let's give it some arms. Same thing that we did with the legs. I'm gonna make it more tubular, so I just need shapes like this. I'm gonna make the arms very thin because you know when the kids they have very like thin noodly arms. And we're gonna need to put a, a shoulder, but for now let's just block like an A pose. Make a bit smaller. Let me make a shoulder here very fast. Come on. So the shoulder shape is normally like a little drop, right? Like a raindrop. So again, because they're kids, I'm gonna make a very tiny shoulder like this or here but in general the shoulders uh they're like little raindrops so what i mean by that is this it's like an inverted drop like this see so that's kind of like what i'm blocking and then the arms they come inside right between the rib cage and the shoulder so i'm gonna move the arms down so they can sit under the shoulder here like so and i'm gonna make them thinner from the side as well like this is the pure ref file available somewhere the breakdown of the archetypes is great and i would love to dive into design characters as well it's not available but if you go to google and you type carl young uh archetypes you're gonna find a ton of cool stuff so you can see here this one's not so good but um carl young archetypes you can find some interesting articles talking about the different kinds of archetypes i can share this with you all let me see this one is a good one yeah, this one has a lot of like descriptions about the ruler, the creator, each archetype. So I'm going to put in the channel here for you all. You can take a look. All right, so now I'm going to duplicate this shape, put it down here. Cool. And for the arms in general, right, you want a little more straight back here. I like to do like a little straight on the top, arc on, on the top here, push it down, and then tapering more here. All the good anatomy stuff you guys already know. So, if you have any questions about what I'm doing, it's very nuanced anatomy here that I'm doing. Because again, I don't want much anatomy at all on my character. Um, let's see, it's easy for studio work. You always make T pose character. Uh, when you when you showing your work to directors, they want to see in pose. So in general, we do it things in pose because that's how we get things approved by directors. And then we do a cleanup phase to neutralize the model and then put the model into a, a T-pose. So no, we don't model straight in T-pose. We pose it first, then we uh, put in T-pose. Adjusting some. Now that I have, it's hard to see the hole without the parts. So every time you start putting the parts, you're gonna see that you've gotta adjust things, right? So that's what I'm doing here. Um, I, I put some objects and then now I'm adjusting the parts, the shapes, etc. Cool. Now for the hand, 
just for now, like we did with the foot, I'm just going to do a little simple shape. I'm going to do a flat sphere like this. Just to, as a placeholder, basically, right? Because we're going to model a hand soon. But for now, this is going to be a hand placeholder um, like this. See? Go back a little. Um, it's easy blocking to simulate, and it's so good to see the silhouette. Correct. Yeah, I'm not even worrying about that because, like I said, I'm not designing yet. I'm just putting shapes in it. And then when we start designing, I'm going to start paying more attention to the silhouette. But yes. Hello, do you work with clay or do you devote your time entirely to digital sculptor, sculpture? In your opinion, it's worth spending time only in clay. If you like it, I think it's worth spending time in clay. I mean, sometimes I think it's fun. I I, I don't do it as much as uh, you know. I wish did, uh, just because like I'm gonna be very honest. I do not like the feeling of clay, like you know, getting your hands dirty and like the smells of materials and things like that. So digital is much more clean. My opinion is just like what I like, but that's just, you know, me being annoying. But I do play, sometimes I uh, I play with play for sure. But whatever makes you happy, I think you should definitely do it, right? I'm going to mirror this. I should probably combine everything, all the pieces for the arm into one, which I will. Mirror this, and then we can start getting a feeling. So I'm going to, like I just said, I'm going to combine all the arm pieces. I'm going to do merge, merge, merge. All right, so we have all in one now. One place like this, so it's easier if we decide that we want to push this down a bit more or up. It's always good to move the arms down like this because Normally, your wrist, it's going to be on the pelvic area, on the pubic area, I mean. So it's a nice way to check if your arm length is working. So if I go here to this model, if I take this and I rotate like this, you can see what I just said. It's like right in the pubic area. That's normally where the arms lay. Again, it's not, it's not, it doesn't mean that we always need to follow as a rule, but it's a good rule to follow when you're blocking out your stuff. So, would you describe yourself as a stylized artist for sure? I do not do much realistic at all. He's kind of falling forward. Can you guys see? He's like falling a bit. I need to fix that. So, uh, yeah, I consider myself a stylized artist for sure. Like, I'm not much, it's very rare I do realistic stuff. Uh, it's just not what I like to do in my free time. I like to do, cartoony stuff, so, yeah. I think it's the neck. I made the neck too, too forward. So I'm just gonna take the, the whole head part, move it back a little bit so he doesn't feel like he's falling. Still feels a little bit. I need to move the pelvic area a bit forward as well. And then the legs. Yeah, I really like stylized, to be honest. Like, I, it's rare for me to do realistic stuff. Sometimes I do a uh, caricature. I like doing caricature sometimes, but not realistic, not much. So, yes, I would say I'm a stylized artist, sure. I could do it, probably. I don't know. It's been so long since I've done realistic. I should probably could do it, but I, I will probably struggle because it's not something I do all the time. Just gonna rotate this a little forward to, to give some, you know, gestures is not uh, like stiff. Just a little forward like this. And, okay. Again, I'm, I'm noticing that I need to make things a bit less anatomical just because what I want to do is a bit more tubular stylized stuff. So 
here in the front, there's way too much volume here. So I'm just gonna isolate and make a little thinner overall. Again, I am thinking about anatomy, don't get me wrong. You know, we know um, there are some angles going on in that anatomic wise, right? So when I go back here, I know that this side should be a bit higher, this side apex should be a bit lower. So I'm just doing that. But I'm being very small new ones going on here. Cool. Probably move this in a bit more. Okay, so this is a very generic proportion feel, right? So now is when we're gonna start designing. I have the pieces, I'm just gonna start moving them and making shapes and see what I'm gonna want to do. So like I said, I mean, they're like about 10 years old. So what I'm thinking here, let me just get some water. If you guys have any question. You can see that we blocked this out pretty fast. But now we can play, right? If we think about, let's look at our reference. Like if we look at Luca here, we can see what's going on, right? So his pelvic bone is right about here. His head ends up here. His legs are here. So it's kind of similar, a little, a little different, but it's kind of like what we're doing. But we can count the amount of heads, right? So he, he's how many tall he, heads tall? So I have one, two, three. He's about four heads tall. I would assume Luca is about like 12, 11, something like that. So just something to think about. Like I, I love, again, like I love how tubular the feeling, but you can see some anatomy going on. You see, it's not like a perfect tube. You can see a little bit of nuance going on here, a little bit more straight on the inside, but it's very suggestive, right? And that is so beautiful to me. Oh yeah, that's a good idea, Daria. Daria said, maybe girls from Despicable Me be an inspiration. That is a very good idea. Let me get here. Uh, let's check it out. Despicable Me. Yep, that's pretty good. This is good proportions. So let me copy here for us. Let's see the other girls. I'm gonna put girls here. We have yeah some good good proportions as well of kids. Uh -uh -uh. See, this is good because we can see their body without much gesture on it. You can think about it. It's pretty cool. Great idea. Oops. Was that? Oh. So if we take this girl, for example, let's see. She is like, her head is about here, right? And then basically she's like two and a half, I would say, heads tall. Um, but if we think of a head and the torso, that would be, let me clean it here. So here's her head, here's the pubic area, and then here's the floor. So you see she has shorter legs and stuff. So. It seems like when people are doing kids, they make the legs shorter. So I might do that uh, for us to try. Yep, that was good. So let's do that. Let's think about it. Okay, so I'm going to shorten the legs again a little bit. Since we noticed that for some kids, people do that. So we'll shorten a bit. But I want to make it still a bit fatter. I like those like trunky legs of kids, you know, so I'm just giving a little bit of fetter feeling. Cool. I think also the, the whole torso could be much thinner. Uh, everything could be a bit thinner. So they think they feel a bit more like, you know, stringy, like a stringy kid. Just gonna push this in more like this. Um, I'm going to push also 
just gonna make the arms a bit more open. Move this in. Give small shoulders like this. So, push it in a bit. Sometimes I like to do it is to take the cage and expand in the back so it kind of feels like a trapezius volume, like this. I think that's good. The hands, I'm gonna make actually the hands, I'm gonna make a bit bigger because I want them to have bigger hands, big hands. So I'm just gonna make a bit bigger like this. Just imagine that this is the palm and the fingers. So like here are the palms and then here are the fingers going around. So something like this. So that's what I'm thinking, okay? It could be even bigger. Oops. Okay. Cool. Move the legs in a bit more. Maybe we can make it even shorter on the torso and then move the legs up a bit. This, you gotta be careful because remember I told you like, if I move this down now, still pretty close to the uh, pubic bone. So that's fine, but be careful you don't make your arms too long. And then this happens, you know, which is not a bad design, it's pretty cool. But it depends what you're going for, right? With your character. So that's not what we're going for right now. We can make a little bit longer arms, but not too much. All right, uh, cool. Let's see what kind of gesture we're getting. I don't like what we're getting on the profile. I think it's probably missing some gesture. So I'm gonna rotate the... Um, Ribcage, I might have to, just thinking what is happening here that I need to work. I don't know if you guys have any suggestions, let me know. Move the head back a little. Because what we want is this, a little bit of angle here, and then we have this shape going on like this. And then on the leg, we have this shape going on like this. Then we have the foot. I think the foot's going to need to be a bit bigger. And then we have the arms. Cool. Uh, awesome. I, now I'm going to make the foot a bit longer. So I'm just going to go here in the foot, lace it where I want. I'm just going to make it longer, a little like this. A bit fatter and a bit longer. Like so. Cool. All right, so we did that. Now is the time where we can duplicate this and play a bit more with other proportions that we could do. Maybe the hips a bit forward. Yeah, I think you're right. We could need to move the hips a bit more forward. Then maybe the legs go forward a bit more too. A little bit better. Yeah, Felipe said maybe make a little more of that twist, you know, to make him feel like there's more that C shape going on here, like this. So I agree with that as well. There's a bit more of that. Can you guys see now? Just going up a bit more. So this vector here is going down and this one is going up. This is normally the motion you want. Maybe a bit more chubby legs. Yes, I love that. We could do a little like a taper feeling. Remember we did on the old lady, like where her arms were like tapering like this to the hand. So on the legs, we can do the same thing where we can do a little chubby on the top and then it tapers down to to the feet. So I'm gonna make it just a smidge chubbier overall, like this. Yep. That. 
cool. Turn on perspective. We could think about like, is the head too big? Could it be smaller? I think it's good that it's big. We might want even bigger. Like Luca would imagine he's about 13, 14. So he's a bit older than the age I'm thinking. I'm thinking more like around this age, which is like probably eight or this girl here is a bit like, she looks like she's like 12 or something. So again, like we can look at some proportions. Let's look at this one, for example. So this one had three, four and a half. For us right now, we have one, two, so one, two, three. This one has one, two, three and a half. So we might be in good shape with proportions. I'm not going to go too crazy with proportions because we're going to do a lot on her costume and everything. So for the neck, also, I'm going to make just a bit thinner, like here. Again, it's very chubby, chubby here. Some kids, we might make like a little thinner face like this. We can do a chubbier kid with a bit more, you know, stuff going on. Shoulder short or an arm gets broad to palm. Shoulder short and arm gets broad to palm. Not sure. You mean this? Like in general, this goes here on the pubic bone here, the wrist area. Um, I don't know if that's it. But all right, let's let's think. We could potentially just duplicate this. So I'm going to do copy and paste tool. So this is a new tool now. And we could test some stuff like go crazy, right? What if we're trying to do super, super more stylized? So we could make the legs even smaller like this and maybe a little thicker, thicker like this as well. Maybe the foot now is too long, but we can fix it. But then the arms. We can shorten the arms now a little bit. Again, I'm just checking here. Shorten the eye, the arms a bit, but we can make maybe a bit thicker the arms from the front and from the side. This, so different proportions you can see, like small stuff, but uh, it makes it look more young. Maybe we can try that. Just gonna fix this foot here, make it a bit chubbier like this, but also smaller. Smaller. You guys feel like this is more, this is more eight, seven, eight, right? This one feels more like 10, 11 ish. So. I don't know. I might go with the stringy one, longer one. Just imagine like they're gonna be using those like, you know, clothes and then like here it has like something like this and then it's like long, something like this. I'm not sure if that's gonna be the outfit, but I'm just imagining some of those choir clothings. Uh, so we basically only gonna see like a little bit of the foot a little bit of the hand and arms, and then the design of the head. Cool. So we can start uh, dynamashing stuff now since we have a, a decent proportion going on. Um, let me see. Is it necessary to work more on the torso part because the clothes can give a good look and the torso part will be covered? Yeah, I'm not going to do too much because we're gonna have very covering clothes on it. So yeah, in general, I don't do a lot of anatomy sculpting because I'm gonna have some clothes in it. Cool, so let's then match this. Um, save the block version. Oh yeah, okay, I'm gonna save it. All right, saved. Now I'm going to start dynameshing. So I'm not going to dynamesh the hands. Let me move these hands forward like this. I'm going to separate the hands and feet because 
Well, the feet doesn't matter. We're gonna put shoes, but the hands I wanna I wanna combine later. So uh, let's do it all together. It's fine. It's fine. We all having fun here. But yeah, for the head, a little bit before we dynamesh, just gonna think about the nose shape a little. So for those of you who knows, you know, took a class with me or something. You know that I like to define this bottom part. So the line between these two shapes, normally where I'm going to put the eyes. So, and again, got to think about contrast, right? So because they're younger, we might want to move this line lower so they have more cranium volume, which makes them feel younger. Okay. So that's what I'm doing here. So I might move the nose down a bit. Uh, and then when I put the eyes here, you know, we have, you know, a little more on the cranium. So if I want to create even more contrast, I can pick this volume here and push it up a bit more. I'm just going to shape a little bit the design of the head before I do a dummy mesh, basically. So... One thing about uh, making, you know, if you ever study any drawing, you will know that uh, you make this shape, right? And then you project the mandible area. So it creates a sort of like helmet feeling, you see? Like helmet, like this, motocross helmet. This is very good shape to start any head, like especially for kids or female, that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, so because we don't know yet what we're going to do with uh, their noses, with the style, remember, I'm kind of looking at Luca uh, turning red. Where's turning red? Here we go. So it's very, the nose kind of like merges with the face in a way. There's not like a big bridge on the nose. So what I'm going to do is to break a little of this nose bridge and make them merge a little better. So, something like this more, it's more flat, yeah? So that's gonna be sort of the shape of the nose for now. So just imagine like we're gonna put, I don't know what kind of style of eyes I'm gonna do, but just imagine some eyes here and then it's gonna have that bean mouth going on, you know, and uh, something going on like that. All right, so let's then mash it all. Everything. And I mesh everything but this sphere on the top here. So I'm just gonna merge down everything. Push down, push down, boop, 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 boop. All right, so they're all now in the same sub tool. And then I'm going to subdivide one, two, two times just to have some smoothness. We're gonna do a dot mesh. I'm wondering if I should put a little finger here for the dynamite, but we can do it later. All right, so let's dynamite. I normally do 128 first because it's a good amount to start. It yeah, might be too little. I'll still get one 200 something. Let's see. Yeah. That's that's a good amount to start playing with it. Cool. All right, now let's clean some of the transition so we get a bit more cleaner, nicer model. We're just gonna go here, start merging things a bit more. Sorry, I forgot the maybe Ellie at the last phrase. Save the vote. Yeah. No, that was great. I like it. Save it. Okay, okay. Tell me to save, I'll save. All right. So start smoothing a little bit. You see that I'm not just going around doing a big smooth like this. I could, but I'm just going slowly because then I can revisit my shapes. What's going on with my shapes, right? Like here, for example. Even though I'm not going to block too much anatomy, I could come here and carve a little bit of the shape of the, you know, the rib cage here. So I can go around very slowly, 
carve a little. And here I'm gonna smooth a little. This I'm gonna push in more to become the armpit. So I don't want I want again like the anatomy we're going for it's subtleties, subtle anatomy. So I'm not going to mark much of anything. I'm just gonna leave it as a suggestion of subtlety of anatomy, okay? Like all these cartoon characters we're seeing here, they have very subtle anatomy. So that's all we're gonna do. This rib cage might be too, too wide. Just push stuff in. A little cleanup pass. We're gonna think that our elbow is gonna be about here. So you can also draw some key shapes for now, just so we can kind of start placing, uh, again, placing some anatomy, right? I'm gonna merge the uh, elbow, elbow with the shoulder a little bit more. We can block a little bit of shoulder blade. Again, you can see that I'm going very, very light because I'm gonna smooth and leave as suggestions of shapes, okay? Here, for example, the, the pectoral muscles, they go like this, right? So they kind of ra radiate like this. So we can do just a little suggestion of a pectoral muscle here for the kid. And then we can smooth and start blocking some volumes here. Cool. Or, and then for the legs, one thing um, I like to think about the leg is like this, right? We have, this sort of going like this, and then in the inside tends to be way more uh, straight, and then a little suggestion on the outside shape. So I'm gonna make it a little more straight, like I said here on the inside, then here as well, smooth a bit more. Okay, smooth here. Remember, look at how cool like this diagonal line. This is so important because the muscle comes and then we have the uh, knee and then we have the shape coming in like this. So um, very important to study anatomy so you can simplify it, right? If you don't know the basics of anatomy, you're gonna simplify too much, make only tubes instead of having nuances of suggestions, which is where you know, some of the Pixar cartoony stuff you see more uh, going on. Well, here you can see that going, um, just a little of suggestion going on. If we wanted, we could start marking a little more like some shapes just so we can see the light breaks, right? So we could do something like this, just so we can mark. All right, the pectorals here, we could think about like, oh, here's gonna be the uh, rib cage. So we can, again, like, it doesn't matter. We're gonna put clothes on top. I'm just showing what I would do. So you guys can see uh, some anatomy suggestions, right? So something like that. And then for the pelvic bone, we could do something like that corner that the pelvic bone has like this. Here in the back, we, he, he needs a bit more booty here. So we can give some of that butt fly. The, the butt shape is kind of like a butterfly like this, you see, like this. So this is the gluteals minor, minor major. This is the major, and I think, yeah, you guys know what I'm talking about. So the minor one is here, and then the major one is this down here. So we can give a little shape like so. Cool. And then for the clavicle, not clavicle, the, wow, I'm missing out the words today, not the MRL. So, what's the name of this thing again? Scapula. So the scapula, we can mark it here as well. Again, suggestions, right? We can come over here and, and mark the clavicle here so we can do a little shape like so yeah this capula thank you um like this 
So very, very nuanced suggested anatomy, as you can see, you know, but again, it's there, right? It's there. So we have very basic stuff. We can start playing a little bit with the face. So again, I'm gonna smooth a little bit of the line down here. So we have the shape of the nose. I want that to be more defined, the nose. So I'm just marking the nose shape here, but not the bridge. The bridge I want to be very soft. So I'm just softening here. This one, I'm gonna make it a little center overall. So push this up a bit more. Might be too projected, so I'm just gonna push it back a bit. And then we get that. Again, do we need all the marks? Nope. But it's it's nice that it helps sometimes, you know. Very helpful sometimes to, to draw on your model. Draw meaning like the shapes is kind of like you drawing with light, right? You're shaping with light so you know what's going on. That's what I mean by drawing on the model. Uh, not necessarily literally drawing, right? Um, in the shapes here, it's important to see in all angles what's going on, right? Cool. Let's just give a little bit of a, a kneecap here. Again, just a, a little suggestion we'll do. Shape like this. Then we can push it out. Me can make this thicker just because his uh, the legs are gonna be thicker overall. Cool. I think that's that. So smooth a bit more. For the hands, we can um let's just put some fingers here for the hands. So again, I was thinking this as like being the palm. And then the fingers come, and then we're gonna have the this here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a little sphere. Any questions so far? Everyone good? So I'm gonna take this sphere to create some fingers. It's gonna be the sum. It's about here. We can see for now the shape I'm feeling. I'll leave it like this for now without the merging yet, just because I wanna block very quickly the clothes. Whoops, what happened there? Didn't have mirror on, so. The other finger went crazy. Okay, so for the clothes, what we could think of is, let's take a look. I like the idea of this little shape, like um, like this stuff here. Are you limited by how much polygon for character like this for a movie? No, movie in general, you know, for movies, we don't have so much polygon limitation. Probably environment people do more, but for characters, we don't have much, you know, you can, obviously, you know, because it's cartoon, it's never going to be too much polygons anyways, but it's not something that we got concerned now, I would say, by limitation. Cool. Have fun. Yes, have fun is very important. So... Thanks for the reminder, Nick. Uh, okay, so we're gonna have that kind of like for now. I'm not completely decisive yet, but let's see. Let's say we're gonna do something like this. So there are a few ways we can do that. We could start with the cylinder. We could start extracting from our character. So let's do extracting. It'll be it'll be cool. So what I'm gonna do is gonna get a lasso tool and I'm gonna make like sort of like that shape, simple shape like this. 
or less. We can change it. This is just a way to, to have a quick start to make those shapes. So something like this. And then you can go down here, extract. I'm going to put the thickness to zero. So it's going to be paper-like. When I say extract and accept, now we have this shape here. It's kind of paper-like. So we can just uh, scale a bit. Center. Okay. See, I'm recently learning uh, ZBrush, but there are much traps and struggling with the song. Yes. It took me about six months to feel comfortable in ZBrush. So don't lose hope. It's going to get better, but it takes a little bit to, to get to the, the rhythm of Z how ZBrush works for sure. I'm doing some zero mashing here. And I'm trying to see if I can get like a perfect feeling of a cylinder feeling instead of having this weird solution is giving me. So I'm just going to try to shape it a little better to see if it will give a little better results on the topology. I'm just gonna keep clicking until it gives me something decent. <laughs> oh, come on. Okay. Oh, what happened here? One thing we can do is to use also the curves, the uh, guides. So it's called zero measure guide. So you can draw a guide on the flow that you want, and then you close your eyes and hope that ZBrush will respect it. So I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to do zero mesh it. Yay, see how now the flow is going that way? That's pretty good. That's what I wanted. So, all right, so we did that. Uh, let's see. Just picked up ZBrush yesterday. I'm so over my head. Yes. Um, yes, ZBrush hurts a little bit to get to the flow, but trust me, if you go over the hump, you're going to love ZBrush. You just need to stay with it, like trust the software, basically. It is an amazing software. There's no question about it. Is it easy to learn? That is something I would say not, no necessarily. It's not easy, but if you stick with it and keep using, the trick is not to like touch the brush once a month or something. You gotta be using every day. And if you keep going every day, you will eventually feel it like second nature. Like, you know, like you don't even think about what you're doing anymore. That's where you want to be with any software, really. You know, right now, for example, I'm studying Blender. But I was only like, I would study and do something and then I would stop for like a month or so. And then I would come back and then I feel like I have to learn a bunch of stuff all over again. So it's not productive at all. So um, what I'm doing now is like, I'm using ZBrush uh, Blender every day a little bit, every day a little bit. And then things are settling in much, much better than what I was doing before. Cool. So this is going to be sh the shape for that piece that I don't know the name, but yeah. Um, nice to know I'm not the only one. Even pros were sailing the same boat once. Yes. <laughs> I see what I meant. Like, I, I still like have so much to learn about ZBrush. It's such a, a powerful tool, you know. So there's so many little things that you can do in better ways inside. It's a, it's a beautiful software, but it's definitely not super easy to to learn at first i would say zbrush is definitely how to get i really like it but already incredibly frustrated however i definitely want to do character creation yeah they just gotta go through the hump like all of us had to you know what i mean just remember all of us had to go through it everyone had to suffer exactly where you're suffering right now <laughs> No one was immune to the suffering of learning ZBrush. Uh, well, 
All right, let's do the the long dress thing. So again, I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna mask this portion like this. So and then same thing, I'm gonna put the thickness to zero and then I'm gonna say extract. And you can see now what I have. Oops, did I say accept? No, I didn't. Extract, accept. Now we have this piece right here. And what we can do is just make this longer to become the dress. The dress part. Calling the dress, but probably has a very different name. <laughs> So if I go back, this is sort of like what we're doing here. Okay, can do a little smoothing so it doesn't feel so uh, stretched for now. Well, uh, on the bottom here, what I'm going to do is probably going to chop, chop it off somewhere. Let's see. <laughs> Leave it like this for now. All right. So it's trying to see how it's curving in. That's pissing me off. So I'm just going to take this and isolate. here and then delete hidden oops and then I have to delete one more row I do have to check out the tutorials on the website Yes, there's so many uh, cool tutorials in ZBrush. Uh, definitely look for them in, on YouTube and stuff. There's a lot of good stuff for ZBrush out there. Even on the ZBrush website itself, they have a ton of like tutorials for people that are starting uh, with it. So uh, here I'm gonna smooth a lot this clothes and I'm gonna make it feel more like a baggy sort of thing like this again like he still feels like he's falling forward but we'll figure that out just giving this piece here flare a bit more out um even if you know the software we still there's too many things that are useless to you and selective things would work every time so this could be different for everyone right yes like if you pick someone that does more realistic work, you'll see that they're gonna be using tools that I normally don't use inside ZBrush and vice versa, right? Like uh, it's very uh, dependent on the kind of work you're doing. Some people like to do hard surface in ZBrush, so they use a ton of different things that I might not be using because I'm mostly using ZBrush for organic work, you know? Um, yeah, so you don't need to know everything. You just need to know what helps you in your work. It's always good to um, look what other people are doing, though, because, whoops, what happened here? I'm going to do a mirror and welds. Oop, now I have it there. Uh, it's always good to see because, like, for example, uh, I have a friend, Felipe. I don't know if he's still here. He said hi in the beginning of the the stream, but I think he's, you know, Filippi, he's using some hard surface tools to help him make it cleaner cartoon models. So that's very smart. He looked at how people use hard surface and he's like, well, I don't do much hard surface, but this would help me to do certain things in cartoon. And then he's using them and it's super smart and and so it's always good to see how people are using tools in ZBrush because you never know what kind of creation you can come up with. 
uh, using yourself, you know. So again, I'm trying to take some of the anatomy out of, out of the, the dress here because it's loose. So we're going to have to add some. Yeah, Felipe is here. So he taught me some cool stuff to make cleaner models in cartoon. And he was using some hard surface techniques, you know. So never know where you're going to learn the stuff. That's why you got to keep your mind young and open. So for this, for example, we can add some uh, dynamics of division now. So if I turn it on, I can put some thickness and then I can make it thick, obviously not that thick, a little bit thick like this, add a few segments. And for the dress, we can zero mesh it. So the topology is not so bad like this. So I'm gonna go to zero mesh it. And I'm going to say about half. Boom. And now you we see we got much better topology going on. So if I isolate here, now you can see that I can isolate the arms like this. And we can create some poly groups. So we can keep it the sleeves separate. If we need to do UVs later or something, this is going to be very helpful. Cool. Like that. And uh, we could all also do, this is the rebel outlaw archetype. Yes, it doesn't look like rebel really because we're just doing a base mesh for now. But this will become a rebel, trust me. I don't know if you missed the beginning of the stream where I explain what I'm doing. So if you were not here in the beginning of the stream, you're not going to understand what the hell I'm doing, but I promise it's going to work. Oh Lord. Okay. So now I'm just trying to make it feel a little more uh loose the clothes. Can you guys hear my dog? She's like a gremlin. She's doing some funny noises here. Okay. So trying to make it a little loose. This probably goes longer, right? like this this character is definitely falling forward but i mean just isolate isolate the body again i think what i need to do is just move all of this forward a little then it will stop falling like this We'll take the head a bit, push it down, back. Okay. Figure it out. But yes, this is the outlaws. Okay. No worries, man. Lupito said, oi, lele, oi. Do you interact with technical specialists when creating a character? Do you ex express their wishes before creating the model? Yeah, I mean, you know, um, it's always good to chat with everyone on your team, animators, TDs, concept artists, all those people ideally will be involved in the process. And the more they're involved, the more fleshed out the characters will be for, for everyone, you know? So it's definitely not a solo task, you know? Right. I'm going to make this bigger just so it's more cartoony. So this is going to make this bigger like this. Feels more like a statement, the whole shape. More like a, like a big statement of the costume. Okay. Next week, we can start uh, thinking about, so this is the costume that everyone is going to use on the choir. 
But our girl, the rebel, she's gonna customize this costume, right? She's gonna put some paint, she's gonna paint, she's gonna put some jewels, she's gonna do some funny cuts and things. I'm not sure yet what, but next week we can think about that. Like, how are we gonna make her uh, break this costume into a rebel costume, right? Into, not rebel, but like into something that she's expressing herself with. Yeah, uh, Nanjada said, I can imagine her outfit full of stickers. We can put stickers, we can get some markers and paint some shapes and stuff. Um, it's a lot we can do. I think that this being this big is a bigger statement. I'm gonna make even bigger. This, yeah. So this we're doing the generic, uh, character and then next week we can do our outlaw character same thing for the dress i'm going to go here dynamics of division i'm going to turn on dynamic and i'm going to give some thickness for now some segments and this and i'm going to make t pose because on this project i'm going to show you all how i put a rig in Maya to pose it. So we're gonna do two kinds of poses. The kids, they're gonna be, you know, just reading the choral, um, the choir lyric stuff. And then we're gonna do a very, very expressive pose for our girl. We need a name for a rebel girl. So I can stop calling her just a girl. Do you guys have any suggestions? <laughs> Hi, Leticia. Good evening. Do you think ZBrush could be used as a creative tool by a character concept artist to create several proposals? Or is it too slow? I mean, I use it. You know, when I was at Netflix, I was a um, this dev modeler. So I was using ZBrush to concept and make proposals, variations. And it was fine to me. But again, like, you know, obviously, I don't, I'm not saying I'm faster than any 2D artist concepting super fast. But it, it worked for me. So I think it's possible. Trisha is a rebellion. <laughs> rebellion. Oh, it's a hi, I mean. She can be called Rebella. I like that, Rebella. That sounds cool. Yay. So, you know. Just shaping here a little. Um, okay, let's stop a little bit here. Let's go to the face before we end the stream, just so we can have some stuff flesh out on the face. Uh, because this one is going to be the generic kid, I think I'm going to make our Rebella kid a little chubbier, but then the other kids are going to be a little more, like, slim. So... I don't know about that yet. I'm just saying stuff for me. But just imagine them with like a little bowl cut, you know, like this boy here, like his hair is so organized and cute. You know, his mom took like probably an hour doing something on his hair. But our Rebella girl, no, she's gonna be all over the place. So let's just pretend this is gonna be like her hair for now. Um, a hair shape. So, yeah, they're going to be proper, like right? proper hair. Could give it more like this. Do you draw a lot before jumping to modeling your characters? I do not. I do not draw. I go straight to 2D and I try to play. Oh, 2D. I go straight to 3D and I try to play in 3D. Um, I normally do very ugly sketches sometimes. You guys saw me doing some just to kind of like get some very quick ideas, but no, I do not draw. Not saying I suggest that. If you know how to draw, you should probably draw. But for me, I think my brain works better in 3D, so I choose to concept directly in 3D. 
The famous bowl haircut, yes. The famous bowl haircut. Gonna make it push it down a bit. This. And we can start pulling some colors. Like, I'm just gonna put a, a kind of like generic white, white kid, American sort of thing, like going on. Not saying that they're all gonna be white. We can play with different colors. But for now, I'm just gonna put a, you know, mid, let's put a mid tone skin tone. This. And then let's say that this one specifically is kind of like similar to this boy we see here on the left. So I'm just gonna put a little blondie, blondie hair. And just blocking some colors. And for the, I don't like that this is red and white. I wanna do even more sub, subdue. So I'm thinking something more monotone, you know, like, I don't, Maybe this is gonna be like more like an earthy tone. Then instead of that red, it's gonna be a little more earthy like this. And then the dress is gonna be kind of like a, a white color. But I don't want anything with much color because our girl is gonna be full of color. So again, to create contrast, I'm trying to to push it, you know. Uh, let's see. The biggest statement would be to make the character a devil in the choir, or is that too far? <laughs> I don't, again, like the rebel can be a bad person or a good person that is just revolutionary. The, the, the idea I'm going is from a revolution. She is, she does not conform to the rules, but not necessarily she's a bad person. She's just trying to express herself and not conform to society. So she's actually a, a good rebel. So for the hair here, I'm going to delete and then I'm going to again, like do some dynamic subdivision and add some thickness. Going in like this. Yeah. We'll think about it. Um, that's good to hear because I've been fearing getting into 3D because my 2D skills are slacking. Well, I mean, I don't, again, like, you know, that's just my my way of doing things. You know, you can think about it. Some people prefer to sketch. I don't. I like to try to play in 3D. It's more fun for me. Some people obviously love to do 2D, so good for them, but that's, that's not how I, I like to do it. Um, profile here, I'm just going to push the dress forward. I'll fix the body uh, a little later. Actually, I'm going to fix the body now. I'm going to rotate all of this forward. To fix once for all the little feeling that's going on. forward a bit more. Yeah, I think it's not falling forward anymore. I think I fixed it this time. Yeah, it seems like I did. Okay. Uh, Again, like throughout the week, I'm gonna think about this and I might change the clothes, but for now I'm gonna leave it like so. Actually, instead of an earthy tone, I'm gonna put more like a blue kind of angelical thing. So you're gonna contrast even more with her uh, when she has very colored dress with stickers and stuff going in, so. Like Lila from Little Stitch, yes, just like it. Uh, it's very difficult for me to model thumb correctly. Are there any rules when modeling hands or just need to study anatomy more? If there's a rule of anatomy for the hands, you know, I think next week, uh, I'm not going to touch the hands right now because we're almost done, but next week I'm going to adjust the hands if you want to see it. But uh, there are a few things that you can do on the hands to have, you know, decent hands. So 
we can take a look at that. Uh, hello, hello. <laughs> Cool. So this is definitely not a rebel. I hope everyone understands that we're getting here later. Um, all right. So let's shape a little bit the head and call this good. So again, I'm going to make them a little more, um, you know, generic feeling so our girl can can shine. So again, like when when you're doing generic stuff, you try to follow a little of the rules of anatomy because that makes them more generic in general. So let's decide what kind of style of eyes we're going to do. So if you see here, you're going to see that there's some different kind of more 2D feeling styles of eyes. Or we can go even more 2D like this from bad guys. Or Luca is a bit more 3D. You can see the lid and stuff. Turning reds a bit more to D as well. Mm -mm -mm. I'm just thinking. I like this because the eye is big, but the iris is very small. Uh -uh. So one thing we can do to think about it. Is I'm just going to make the eye cavity right now. So it's going to. Push it in some some volume here just so we can feel it. See that I'm pushing in some eye cavity. Very light because I'm gonna keep it very 2D. So I'm just doing a suggestion of an eye cavity going on. I'm working to create a portfolio and for sure I'm going to highly detail them, but how much project should it be? Three or four? In general, yeah, three to five pieces, a good amount of pieces to have in a portfolio to submit to studios, I'd say. So yeah, in the, uh, I would say in the right mindset, yes. Uh -huh. I've been like thinking about the shape of the head. I'm looking at this kid here and he has a very like this sort of shape going on. So especially because we can make them like with a little bit of a mouth open singing. So that's what I'm trying here. I'm just going to kind of shape a little bit of that, that feeling. Yep. And we can do a little carving to make like an O shape. Um, let me think how. I think I'm going to do the bean shape mouth because I like it a lot. So let's do that. They're going to be singing like something like this. And if you wanted to make it younger, you make the mouth closer to the nose. Like every time you're trying to make like younger vibe, you try to keep eyes, nose, and mouth very close to each other. That makes things look younger. Okay. So making here a little shape. Carving. You can see that different from other mallers sometimes you can see that i go very slow carving instead of doing something like this it's because i it breaks my heart when i see people going like this it's like i don't know for for stylized i like to feel like i'm going slow and organized and clean as possible so that's normally why I, I it, it might look like I'm, I'm, I'm doing slow. It's because I'm trying to control the shape all the time, basically. <laughs> so it has a bit of an open mouth like this. Just going to check my shape. Again, like looking from the bottom, we can see that the mouth is missing some like shape, some angle. So I'm just going to push this back. Give a little more of that uh, arch feeling. 
like this. Be careful because when I carved, what happened was this, and then they went in the mouth and then it went out. We don't want that. We want the very simple shape like so. So that's what I'm checking here, looking from the bottom so I can have that simple arch going. Okay. Big. I'm gonna make this all a bit smaller here in the back. And um, before we go, it's almost time, but before we go, just going to add a little sphere for the eyes. I have 11 props, one character, and I'm currently adding character animation to my portfolio. That's awesome. Animation is always fun to have. If you know how. <laughs> I'm not very good with animation. Uh, it's out like this. And for those of you who are joining for the first time or something, I highly recommend if you want to to model with me at the same time open zbrush when i'm doing it and just go modeling too like even if you want to do the same archetype like we're doing the rebel you can create your own little story and do it yourself as well it's a nice way to sort of like oh every sunday i'm going to join leticia and i'm going to model and work a little bit on this piece with her and then when i'm done we should all be done together and then we're going to have something, hopefully, to put on a portfolio. Just a suggestion. Again, I'm just really trying to make sure that I have, uh, I don't have things breaking the very simple shape. So, really trying to fix the shapes here. And we're going to do zero measure um, next week. I'm not going to do it right now. But... Okay, we can do this. So, and then for the ears, um, let me just see if they're thick enough. Yeah, they look thick enough. We can do this to a little. Uh, if we look, for example, at the ears on Luca, let's see, this little C shape. It has like this little C, like a moon. Um, I'm just gonna do that because it's very cute. So, do a little moon shape here. Just for now, we might change it later, but just so we can have some shape going on. Like this. Okay, and it's looking, you know, low res because I like to stay low res as, because if you stay low res, there's not much detail you can put. So it's going to force you to think about the big shapes first. So when I keep my model low res as much as long as possible, I'm always trying to only think about the primary shapes, secondary shapes, tops. So that's what I'm doing here. No that I'm shaping and looks shitty, but it's gonna be clean soon. So I don't need to worry too much about that. Cool. And I, if you want, I can go here just with the smooth and smooth a little bit. But again, like I'm not too concerned because when I subdivide, this is gonna get solved. I'm just making sure that I still stay low res as much as I can to work. Cool. Uh, when you start at 3D, you, you start with characters. When I started, no, I actually started with, um, um, what's the name of the thing? Archivist. Archivist is my cats, like 
uh, for architecture visualization. I actually started with that. I come from a family of architects. So I went to architect school and uh, I started making buildings and stuff like that. But I was always doing characters on my own time when I was not working with buildings. And then at uh, some point I decided to quit to only do characters because that's, that's my real passion. So, yeah, but I actually start with Archimedes. Which was very fun, but I prefer doing characters. Right, um, maybe the next is then. Volume here, let me see if I missed any. How do you feel about doing the mouse bag with Zimaler? Uh, yeah, we could do like um, Zimaler. I saw some people doing uh, with um, um, using Boolean. You know, so you can create a very clean mouse bag. You use a Boolean shape. Um, I don't worry too much, but yes, you can definitely use Zimal or, or, or Boolean. I think Boolean is a good idea because you can create very clean shape from the get-go, you know, like. So normally I like to just massage like this, what I'm doing now, and that's enough for me. So. Which tablet do you use? I think I use the, it's a Cintiq, no, not Cintiq, Intus 5. This one here, I don't know if you can see it. But it's a medium size Intus 5. I've been using for a long, long time. I, I think I mentioned before that I tried a Cintiq, but I start having pain on my shoulder, so I gave up on that. Where can we find your architecture work? <laughs> I don't think you can find anywhere anymore because when I when I decided to do car characters, I kind of like redid my portfolio. And as I always say, if you want to be hired doing architecture stuff, put on your portfolio. If you don't, don't put it. So I stopped putting uh, uh, this uh, archivist on my portfolio because I didn't want to get jobs to do that because I didn't want to do those things. So I actually uh, deleted a bunch of uh, my archivist's work because I don't want people to think I want to do those type of works, you know what I mean? I want people only to see me doing this type of work. So uh, I don't think I have anywhere. I might have a, like on my computer somewhere, but I'm not online. I took it all down because I didn't want to get job offers to do that kind of stuff anymore. So, all right. I think we blocked, it's very generic. So like I said, we're gonna shape this for a few, I think we're gonna have four different characters here. So it's gonna be one, two, three, four. And we're gonna shape them just a little bit different one from the other. And then we're gonna have a girl completely different on the side here, the rebel girl, right? So if you join here expecting to see a rebel scope today, that was not the day, it's gonna be next week. We're gonna shape this this guys first, and then next week we're gonna do all the adjustments for our rebel girl. Um, it'll be very fun. All right, we're out of time. Uh, this is where we stopped. Pretty good progress, I would say. We just need to work on the hands, think about some pins and shoes and stuff. And then we're gonna spend most of our time on the face. Um, again, I'm thinking something more on the vines of Luca and turning red and bad guys. So I really like what they did on bad guys here with the eyes. I might experiment with that. That could be fun. Um, but yeah, this is where we stop today. Um, any final questions before we go? Again, since we're starting a new project, there's still time for you guys to 
start also as well if you want to join me on the same subject of rebel you can create your own story doesn't need to be like mine you can make a bad rebel i'm making a good rebel but you can make a bad one whatever you want thanks so much for the class Leah. always uh, amazing to learn from you yay thanks nandi thanks for joining us and thanks for being awesome let me save this and uh I'll see you all next Sunday. Think about what you want to do, or if you just want to watch, think about what I should do to make this piece better. Bye, everyone. All right, I'm going to call it. Have a good one.